Well, good evening, everyone. I hope you've had a, a good Lord's Day. I must say I've enjoyed being back in the church for live worship. From a personal point of view, it's uh, a bit more freedom since I was released from shielding. But being able to see other people, even though you're masked and uh, not easily recognisable, has been a, a blessing. And there's just something different about being back in that place for worship and being able to, to join with others in, in praising God. It's a bit strange sometimes, you know, when, when you're recording an item like this, I, the service gets recorded on a Thursday and this reflection gets recorded on a Friday morning. And you just don't know what's going to happen over the next two or, 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 or three days. You don't know what's going to happen in the interim. And we've had a, a very important couple of days uh, here in Scotland with the election. And as I, I sit here speaking to, well, I'm just speaking to Chris at the moment, um, <laughs> uh, we don't know what the outcome of the election will be. But we do know that whatever the circumstances, we can depend on the presence of Almighty God. The God has been revealed to us in our Lord Jesus Christ. And time and time again in Scripture, we're encouraged to focus our minds upon the presence of God in the midst of every circumstance of life and to place our trust in him in the good purpose that he cherishes for the whole of his creation. Just the other day there, I, I was reading in Psalm 118, a verse that, that came back to me this morning. It says, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Now, I don't think that the psalmist is being especially disparaging about the, the powers that be. But once again, he's directing us towards the one who is the ultimate source of authority. The one who is the ultimate source of truth. The one who's the ultimate source of power. And it's on him the God who has been revealed to us through our Lord Jesus, that we will focus our minds and open up our hearts in this time of devotion that we have at the end of the Lord's Day. Let's pray. God, our Father, we give thanks to you that whatever the circumstances, whatever our own personal circumstances, whatever the circumstances of our nation or the world, we can depend upon your presence. We can depend upon the reality of your goodness, your love, your justice, your peace. Things that are constantly flowing from your being. And so we pray, Lord, that however things have turned out for our country politically in this moment, that there will be people in governments, that there will be people in parliament who seek to connect with this outflow of goodness, of justice, of peace, of compassion, and that we can go forward into the future knowing that hearts are responding to all that you have done for us in Jesus. And that there is hope in that you have never left the earth without your own witnesses. So wherever we are, Lord, whatever our occupation, whatever our priorities, whatever our political convictions, we pray that the priority would be, as Jesus called it, to seek first the kingdom those values that are eternal and in the end will be supreme. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Well, folks, one of the, the great things about having clever friends is that whenever they write a book, they send you a, a free copy. And not long ago, one of my friends sent me a, a complimentary uh, copy of his latest book. And it came along with a letter which wished me every blessing, but also said that there would be nothing in the book that I didn't already know. Nothing in the book that I didn't already know. And, well, I don't know about that. There were one or two different kind of slants on things that uh, I'd never thought of before. But the point is that sometimes we need to be reminded of things that we already know. Sometimes it's important to be refreshed in the things that we already know. I remember on one occasion, it's a, a wee while ago now, but uh, for some reason I had a, an evening off and I went along to St George's Tron in Glasgow where the Reverend Alexa Eric Alexander was minister at the time. And Eric was preaching through Romans and he was focused on chapter 8, verses 1 to 4 on that evening, and he unpacked it in his usual clear but also majestic way. And I came away from that experience, I came out of the church that night feeling that I'd heard the gospel for the first time. You know, I already knew this, what was being preached, but somehow it was being refreshed within me. It was being renewed within me. And, and that was a terrific blessing. And that's something that we need to experience every now and again. I remember, again, it was a, a, a while ago, and one of our members who has now uh, moved on to another city, uh, one of our members brought his, his father to, to church with them, and he was expressing his appreciation, his father's appreciation of the service afterwards. And he said, you know, my father just loves to hear the gospel. I've never forgotten that because, you know, here was a, an elderly gentleman and I'm sure that he, he knew the gospel perfectly well, but he loved to have it refreshed within him to give him new comfort, new strength, new peace, new hope for the, for the future. There are times when what we already know needs to, to sink deeper into our being, to be refreshed within us so that we see once again the glory of the, the gospel, what Jesus has, has done for us in his life, his death and his resurrection. And that's something that the apostles, the men who wrote so much of the the New Testament, that's something that they knew. You know, Paul talks about people who refreshed his spirit. And I'm sure he meant just by their fellowship, by their being there for him, was a refreshment to his being. But I think also in being able to, to share the, the faith that was common uh, to, to them was also a great encouragement for, for Paul. There were times when he was dry in his, his spirit, when he was down, and he needed a friend to remind him of the great truths of the gospel. And that's something that he took very seriously in his ministry to the, the very early Christian congregations. I wonder if you remember that moment in the in his first letter to the church at Corinth, where Paul feels moved to remind these people about the gospel, to refresh their minds, their spirits in relation to the great truths of the gospel. There had been some controversy within the, the church. People were moving away from the truths that they had originally heard from Paul, those truths that revealed Jesus and all that he had accomplished for them. 
that people were, were moving away from that. But in addressing this problem, I'm going to read this passage to you, but, but just listen to how Paul makes a personal appeal to each one of them. He says to them, Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. That's a very personal appeal to them. Do you remember the gospel you first heard, the gospel I preached? He said, by this gospel, you are saved. Each man, each woman, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. And Paul goes further in saying, for what I received, I passed on to you as first importance. This is not my ideas. This is not something that I've conjured up through reflection. This is something I've received. Paul had received the gospel from Jesus himself. What I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter. And then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as one abnormally born. Now there you are, that's Paul having to, to take it upon himself to remind people of the message that had first made an impact on their lives. And Paul says, this is the gospel that you have to stay with. Paul is seeking to refresh their spirits in the great truths that he has, that he shared with them in the, in the past. There's a story about uh, the great reformer, Martin Luther. He, he was prone to being quite morose at times, you know, at times of, of discouragement. He felt the weight of responsibility for the, the great movement of reform that he had been in, involved with. And he was going through a, a kind of a dark period at one time. And, and he was sitting at his breakfast one, one morning and his wife, Katie, she came down and she was dressed in her, in her funeral clothes. And Martin chimed up and, uh, and said, uh, who's dead? And she said, God's dead. And Martin says, what are you talking about, woman? And Katie said, well, that's the way you're behaving. As if God's dead. You know, well, that was... That was him sorted, minister's wives, you know. And uh, <laughs> that gave him the, the joke that he needed. He needed to get back to the great truths on which he had founded his, his life. He needed to once again feel the power of, of those truths. He needed refreshment for his spirit. And, you know, I think that that's one of the advantages of the, the Christian year. You know, I don't follow the, the Christian year too rigidly in my preaching ministry, but I do see the value of having certain times of the year when we can focus on different aspects of the, the story of Jesus, his, his, his birth, his his crucifixion, his resurrection, the coming of the, the Holy Spirit, it's good for us to be reminded of those things. J just recently, uh, you know, throughout Easter, you may have been following the, the series I've been doing on the resurrection appearances of Jesus in the gospel according to John. Now, personally, I have felt refreshed in my spirit having to, to focus on these stories once again. I mean, yeah, I don't know how often, how many times I've preached in those stories. But going back to them 
I've seen different things. I've, I've experienced different things. We, we need that, that reminder of the great truths. We need that refreshment in our spirits. I'm sure you're familiar with the old hymn. It's actually, it actually hasn't been included in the latest revision of the Church of Scotland hymn book, but I wonder if you, if you know it. Tell me the old, old story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I used to enjoy having that hymn before I preached because it was like the, the congregation was calling upon me, you know, to tell them the, the old, old story. And the, the, um, the writer of the hymn, it's, it's interesting that, that she sees the, the, the old, old story, the gospel that she already knows. She wants to hear it again in times of trouble, when she needs to be comforted when she needs to be challenged with regard to her priorities in the, the Christian life. And the, the reason why she needs this constant refreshment is that the story, it's not that there's anything wrong with the story. She says, for I forget so soon, the early dew of morning has passed away at noon. You know, how often have we gone through times like that when it just seems that the truths that, that have excited us, the, the truths that have motivated us, the truths that have seemed so important in our lives, they've just kind of evaporated. They're not there any longer in, in their power. And so we need to hear the old, old story of unseen things above of Jesus and his glory of Jesus and his love. It's just part of the, the, the Christian life, friends, and if you like, part of the discipline of our lives to, to keep ourselves in contact with everything that's needed for us to be faithful in our Christian lives. You know, the apostles knew how important it was to tell the old, old story over and over again, even to believers. We've, we've heard about Paul earlier on. But I'm going to finish tonight with a passage from the second letter of, of Peter. And this is quite poignant because there's an indication here that Peter's aware that, that very soon he'll be facing the, the, the challenge of, of death. But in his first chapter of Second Peter, he examines some of the great truths of the Christian faith. But then he goes on to say at verse 12, I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it's right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body. Because I know I will soon put it aside, as our Lord Jesus has made clear to me. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. That's the, the watchword, really, of these early days in the life of the church. We should hold it in our minds and our hearts, friends, in these days in which we live. That it's good to know the gospel and we cherish the gospel. But we do need these times of refreshment when once again the excitement and the commitment and the power of that gospel is revived within us. Tell me the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Let that be our prayer for the remainder of our Christian lives. And let that be our responsibility to one another, to tell the story. Let's pray. God, our Father, we give thanks to you that 
we have come to that place where we we know the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been told the story. We've been given grace to respond to him. And so we ask that you would continually refresh our spirits with the truths that flow from him and which enable us to go forward into the future with courage and with hope. We remember, O oh Lord, at this time, our own nation, however the lines have fallen, we pray that you would bless all those called to serve in our Scottish Parliament, all those in authority in the other nations of the United Kingdom also at this time, that they might be sustained in whatever office they occupy, so that there might be in our nation's life stability and peace and care for all those who are on the margins, all those who are vulnerable, all those who need to know that in some way they are cherished. We pray all of this, Lord, in, in Jesus' name, along with the, the prayer that you will keep our families and our friends safe and well during this time. There has been so much to encourage us in the battle against coronavirus, but we still need to be careful. And we ask that you would keep us in mind of the things that we need to do for our own sakes and for the sakes of others. But keep, O oh Lord, our families and friends in your loving focus. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.